Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum my brothers and sisters I hope you're praying your salahs as well as looking to the Quran and Hadith for guidance in your everyday life If you're watching this video and it's salah time please pause it and go pray and come back when you're done Please use the link in the description to donate to the people in Palestine The charity I've teamed up with has a 100% donation policy Please also check out the description section of this video to support the channel In today's video we're going to concentrate on Piers Morgan's recent Zionist and Zionist sympathizer are male guests that are quite prominent voices in the media and on social media. In particular, author and sodomite Douglas Murray, obsessed anti-Muslim atheist Sam Harris and the so-called Rabbi Shmuley Botek, who indoctrinated his own daughter into the SEX industry. All three of these clowns support the Zionist agenda, so much so that they just shrug off the fact that over 20,000 people have been eliminated in Palestine since October 7th, with nearly half of that number being children. They see this as justified collateral damage, and whenever these sordid individuals are asked about the loss of life, they only blame Hamas and never the IDF, which I think is the definition of evil. If these pathetic excuses for men had even a shred of decency, they would at the very least show a tiny amount of genuine remorse for the fact that Israel are wiping out innocent civilians en masse. Any decent person would be calling for this to end, without conditions of surrender or displacement of Palestinians. I want to be explicitly clear that being anti-Zionist is not the same as being anti-Jewish. A common tactic that these Zionists use is to label anyone that opposes Israel's war crimes as anti-Semitic, which is not the case. Being anti-war does not mean you're anti-Semitic. That's not what we're about on this channel. I've had Jewish guests on my show that are good people and they're also in opposition to the genocide taking place in Palestine, which these creepy Zionists deny. Let's look at a short clip of this Douglas Murray and dismantle it. I would cite the, the killing of the three hostages. I would cite the killing of the two women outside the Catholic Church, that they're using indiscriminate bombing, and so on. Do you, Douglas, notwithstanding your full throttle support of Israel, does anything that's been happening make you think Israel needs to execute this war differently? No. In the first example you give, the absolutely tragic shooting of these three hostages, some of the spin on that is, is almost as if it shows the IDF is a sort of so brutal that it even kills Hamas hostages who are Israeli. Can you imagine what it was like for the soldiers who made the mistake of shooting three people who turned out to be Hamas hostages? Why would they shoot anyone who was shirtless and waving an SOS flag, whoever they were, whether they were Israeli well, hostages or whether well, they thought I they mean, were Palestinians. That'll be a matter for the inquiry into it. Anyone who uses the term genocide in this context, it's such a weird smear and a libel of Israel. So you've just rattled off Hamas figures, as every one of your kind always does. Cried, uh, kind. Uh, you asked if he cared about 8,000 dead babies. And his answer was no, because he doesn't care. The responsibility for their deaths lies on Hamas. The Israelis do an incredibly careful campaign before bombings to try to make sure that civilians are warned to leave areas that are about to be attacked. None of the Arabs in this region done something. If all the states in the region cared at all, they would take them in. Even if you take IDF's outlandish numbers of 7,000 Hamas fighters killed, that means uh, their kill ratio of civilians to fighters is still worse than Hamas's. And they have now killed 20 times the number of civilians that Hamas has killed. When Douglas talks about push them out and they say, well, you're all Arabs anyway, why don't you just go live somewhere else in the region? That's the definition of ethnic cleansing. They live in Gaza. That is outrageous. And he says it with no concern because Palestinian lives don't matter. And you ask them, hey, how many Palestinians can you possibly kill? And he never answered the question. Douglas Murray is a member of the Rainbow Community. Maybe that's why he opposes Islam so much. He writes for mainstream media rags, which further takes away his credibility. And he has the demeanor of an underhanded, untrustworthy Disney villain. Think Scar from The Lion King. Plus, he's wrote some trash books detailing further why he is anti-Muslim. And you saw in the clip, he actually defended the IDF for taking the lives of three Jewish men who they mistook for Palestinians, as well as two Christian women. Douglas did show slight concern due to the fact that the victims were not Muslims, and credit to Piers for saying it doesn't matter what their backgrounds were. The fact of the matter is, it's wrong. And when Piers pressed him on it further, Murray brushed it off as something that would have to be looked into. Murray even had the nerve to say, think of the IDF soldiers who made that mistake. No Douglas, think of the Jewish families of those three Israeli civilians that the IDF eliminated. How do they feel that their own government, who they trusted, betrayed them? The IDF's indiscriminate bloodlust resulted in those people losing their precious loved ones. The same goes for the families of those Christian Palestinians 
Palestinian women, which Murray didn't even acknowledge. Just this statement alone exposes Murray's real intentions. This man is so disturbingly Islamophobic to the core that he's okay with the loss of life as long as it achieves the long-term objective of eliminating Muslims and eradicating Islam. This sentiment was furthered by how he justified Israel's violence by saying that they give warnings before the attack and blamed Hamas completely as if the IDF don't make conscious decisions to commit atrocities over and over again. How about they just stop Douglas? Pierce's other guest, Chenk, was correct when he stated Murray was ignorantly asking for ethnic cleansing by trying to shame other Arab countries into taking in Palestinians. Why should Palestinians have to move to accommodate warmongering Zionists, whose end goal has always been to take the land that is not theirs in the first place anyway? The fact of the matter is, Murray revels in the massive loss of life of Muslims currently taking place in Palestine. That's why he deliberately denies the figures detailing the loss of life of Palestinians and also denies that Israel is carrying out a genocide in Palestine. Let's roll the next clip. We have a vast number of people in the Muslim community worldwide, not just in the occupied territories or in Gaza, who are powerfully deranged by religious symbols and their religious identity. And we're talking about a culture, again, I'm, I'm not talking about just Palestinians, I'm talking about the Muslim community worldwide in, you know, in dozens of countries that has produced a seemingly unending supply of suicide bombers over the last 50 years. That is the, the situation we're in. We're talking about a society, now I'm talking about the, the Gaza and, and the West Bank in particular, where in their schools, they teach six-year-olds the love of martyrdom and the hatred of Jews. The world on some level has simply accepted that there is a different standard held to the Muslim community, right? We all understand that you can stage a play making fun of Mormonism, but to stage such a play about Islam would be unthinkable. The tendency in the Muslim community to erupt with just psychopathic rage in response to what it perceives to be the desecration of religious symbols. And that should be intolerable to us. The new norm is there are certain things you can't say about Islam, there are certain symbols you can't traduce. And it's because we know that tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of people will, will march into, into the streets, even in the capitals of Europe. What is going on now in Gaza, the kind of obliteration of a lot of Gaza, the, the mass killing of civilians and so on, Israel will justify by saying they're trying to get rid of a terror group. But the execution has been so increasingly indiscriminate that is there not a danger that it actually massively increases the radicalization problem rather than remove it? The real problem of radicalization, I would say, is not connected in any kind of rational way to real world grievances. Right. I mean, so the, the real problem of radicalization is the level as a level of ideas, right? Ideas around martyrdom and jihad that easily cross borders. That's a, a larger problem of jihadism and specific religious beliefs that are endemic to Islam and that it is taboo to criticize. But specifically with Gaza, it's very easy to understand why people seeing that imagery think that Israel is in the wrong for producing so many casualties. But they are fighting a terrorist organization, a jihadist organization that is using its own civilian population as human shields. It has strategically embedded itself among civilians, put its headquarters under a hospital. It prevents civilians from leaving to safer areas because it wants to produce carnage. That is a sincere expression of their worldview. This is the issue. We're dealing with a suicidal death cult. Sam Harris is a passive aggressive anti-Muslim and has a definitive cognitive bias and superiority complex connected to his belief sets and racial background. The fact that he denied the Palestinians could become radicalized because they lost family members and instead labeled Muslims as a whole as extremists due to their religion reeks of supremacy and discrimination. He further stated that he should be able to make fun of Muslims for their beliefs and not tolerate them standing up against anyone disrespecting their religion. Sam, why on earth do you think it's okay to insult people like this, just because you have a different worldview that you think is right. You call Muslims deranged and label us psychopaths because we have a backbone and won't allow atheists like you to poison our culture like you have every other religion and tradition in the West. We're not all radical, most of us are normal people who just want to live peacefully whilst practicing our religion. This guy even stated that kids are being radicalized in Palestine schools and are being taught to be anti-Jewish. Does that justify them being wiped out Sam? And don't you teach people to be anti-Muslim? Islamophobia disguised as a false hierarchy of moral superiority that Harris represents when he paints Muslims across the board as savages, mirrors the justified modern day colonization attitudes of Zionists also. October 7th in Israel was a horrible event, but does that justify
justify a repeated daily October 7th since then, being committed in Palestine with no end in sight for the foreseeable future. Harris is expected also spewed the usual slogans of human shields, hospital bases and calling Muslims extremists to justify Israel's brutal, excessive aggression. Sam also stated Muslims are held to a different standard, as if we are privileged. That's not the case, Sam. We have to stand up against all the ridicule and hatred relentlessly thrown our way so that we are not steamrolled over by people like you, who won't stop in their mission to ensure that we have no trace of our religious identity left. People are not the same, Sam. We can be different in our beliefs and still coexist. And what is happening in Palestine is far from privilege. Harris complains about some clumsy radicalised maniacs exploding themselves in the name of religion, which is completely wrong in my opinion, whilst ignoring that Muslims are bemoaning the fact that organised powerful governments do the same act en masse in a much more professional manner, accompanied by a full PR campaign of propaganda, whitewashing the wrongdoing as some sort of justified heroics. The privilege is most definitely yours, Sam. Let's roll the last clip. Winston Churchill is the greatest British statesman and hero of the 20th century. Let's remember, when Churchill was faced with a genocidal threat of the Nazis, you know what he did? He laid waste to 70% of Dresden, Essen, Cologne, Berlin. He eviscerated Germany and turned it into a parking lot, murdering about 6 million German civilians. And then Harry Truman dropped two atomic bombs bombs on Nagasaki, Hiroshima, and, and Israel has nuclear weapons. So what you're saying is, hey, we only murdered 10,000 civilians and wantonly and recklessly, and we only did a partial genocide, so we're not as guilty. I'm not buying it no. at all. The unique scenario in Gaza is that nearly half of the civilian population are children. They have nothing to do with this. They're not politicians. They're not in Hamas. They're not terrorists. They're not military. They're kids. And they are in their thousands being killed. Here. Is there any limit of the number of children who need to be killed to get rid of Hamas here, or is there no limit? All Hamas needs to do is let the civilian population go south. Stop using them as human shields. It's Hamas's fault. It's Hamas's Rabbi fault. Rabbi Shmuley, you did say there is a limit. What is that limit? Uh, Pierce, it's hard to put a number on how many people Hamas is prepared to allow to in order to destroy the state of Israel. Shmuley is a filthy, deceitful individual that does not conduct himself in a manner befitting a Jewish rabbi. Shmuley, in all his interviews, makes generalised, disrespectful and insensitive comments about Muslims, but sneakily states it's only Islamists and extremists that he is labelling. This man has no respect for Muslims. He uses a common tactic of paying lip service to us, whilst his actions are the opposite. He recently collaborated with well-known Islamophobes on a live stream and has even consistently harassed many female Muslim celebrities and politicians by taking out ads in national newspapers degrading them because they support Palestine. Shmuley's moral character has been of question for a long time. He has published numerous smutty books on physical intimacy and even allows his own daughter to enter into that business instead of protecting her from it. And on Piers' show, this guy sinks even lower by using the example of the tens of millions of people who lost their lives in Germany and Japan at the hands of Britain and America to justify what Israel is currently doing to Palestine. That is absolutely insane and demonic. I don't understand how this man is a rabbi. I've spoken to rabbis and they don't speak or act like this individual. And once again, just like his Zionist and Islamophobic counterparts, he used the same propaganda slogans of human shields, blame Hamas completely and not the IDF at all, etc, etc. It's a broken record and the lies are totally transparent. The craziest part was when Piers asked this genocidal maniac about what's the limit for the loss of life. Shmuley just blamed Hamas again and said it's hard to put a number on it, as if he was referring to cattle and not actual human beings. The constant use of propaganda from these Zionists is just disgusting and it is our responsibility to keep putting out the correct information and to stand against innocent people and innocent children being exterminated as if they are subhuman. Let's pray for our brothers and sisters over there and donate what we can. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and turn on notifications as I'll be posting new content daily. Jazakallah care. Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah